NAACP is calling for black athletes, student athletes, to reconsider decisions to attend public colleges and universities in Florida. They're targeting Florida, challenging a new state policy that bars those institutions from using government funds on diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. So they're banning that, but they're going to let the athletes on because that's money, Florida. Mm -mm -mm. In a letter on Monday, the uh, national to uh, uh, to future athletes, uh, the NAACP leader Derek Johnson implored college-bound Black athletes to quote choose wisely. Um, I've been calling for this for a while personally. I think it's the only way because I believe you know again, um, you know people don't believe that fat meat is greasy, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have to show them, and the only way to show them is to 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 have folk feel what it feels like to not have us. That day of absence, I did a play when I was in um, day camp back in the um, late seventies. And uh, the day of absence was the play that we did. And I remember it to this day because it was radical to think about a day when black people just weren't there and how the world would be you know, so different. College sports, <laughs> Alabama, all, listen, Notre Dame, this would be a game changer if, and this is why I was so miffed with Deion Sanders because he had an opportunity to break something open. And he didn't, you know, he, and, and again, do what you gotta do for yourself, but he had a chance to do something for him the culture forever and it was about to work and it was working all the endorsements that were coming in <sighs> could it happen i don't know don is here amber's here don you look like you want to say something <laughs> you know um i think that the naacp issued a bold pronouncement and i want to big up my brother randall woodfin the mayor of birmingham alabama who has done the same thing but he has an even more immediate you know, he's not the leader of a national organization. He is the leader of a city who worships football above all. Uh, he's the leader of a, the biggest city in a state who worships football above all. And he's come out and said it, uh, jeopardizing his status as a leader in that state. I mean, some would say jeopardizes it in the eyes of those who would be willing to oppress. But I would say enhances it in the eyes of those who are seeking to codify liberation. That's a theme through the episode. Right. But, um, you know, so shout out to my man, Randall, selfish plug there. But uh this is bold action. This is the type of stuff that's necessary. And if you think about the founding of our country, we know what it was based on. There's a very clear through line about the usage of the labor of the black body here. That's what we're talking about. And you could talk about it in the context of Division One, Power Five college sports. We could talk about it in the, co in the context of chattel slavery. Either way, we are talking about who profits and who benefits off of the labor of the black body. And we have a right to claim some level of autonomy in exchange for our labor, our, our labor. And we're still those, those labor roars in the college sports context. Yes, they do have access to NIL and other forms of some little money here and there, but let's be clear. Only a few athletes at the very top are getting that money. They are not being compensated by the bodies who are making the money. So this is an extraordinary opportunity to claim some personhood, um, even if it's not profit, but to claim some personhood and basic human dignity in the face of those who are, are claiming extraordinary profits at the expense of the labor of these black bodies. So I'm all for it. And props to Derek Johnson and NAACP, who I do not always agree with, but I'm very, very happy to see this um, coming from those platforms. <sighs> Is it possible, though? And what would that require? Because I look at I was looking at um, the South Carolina, Louisiana Tech women's uh, SEC championship on on Sunday and all of those players that are playing for Kim Mulkey, who to me could give a damn. Um, Angel Reese had a sprained ankle, really bad sprained ankle, but she was out there, you know, and um you know, when Brittany Griner was was literally fighting for her life in a Russian prison. Uh, Kim Mulkey didn't even offer her thoughts and prayers as a good Christian woman. So I just feel like, you know, at some point, uh, and I feel the same way about Gino Ariema in some ways, y'all can, you know, at me if you want to, but there's a, there's a patriarchy that I don't think we should be celebrating or, or, um, giving benefit to this man became a multimillionaire because he could not coach men. I'm gonna let you know that right now. Although I'm gonna put out something radical. I would love to see Dawn Staley in the NBA as a coach, as a head coach. I think she's one of the few coaches that could coach men in the NBA and have that res yeah. level of respect and they would win. They would win too. 866, the, you know, one of them teams with 
anyway, I won't I won't start start this. But the Warriors could no anyway, A six six eight zero one eight two five five. Well, you know, I'm just thinking the only way you press power into uh capitulating is by making them miss something. And it's these the athletes that's yeah, it's the billions it's of the dollars. Money. Let's go. It's the money. Let's go. I think, but it's conflicting messages to me. Like I I feel like you have one message that's like this rugged individualism, you know, build generational wealth, do it, you know, for your family. Like it so like if you think about a Deion Sanders, that's what his mindset was. Like, okay, there's more money. This is generational wealth. I can grow here. And then you also have this other message of like unity and like their strength in numbers. And for us to change the system, we need to band together and be uncomfortable. That That's competing. And it's especially hard to deal with competing messages when you need the money, when you need the resources. Like, so I, I think it's, I do not appreciate I, I, and this is part of why I'm always a fan of like, we need to hold, you know, especially white folks with, you know, access accountable for allyship because you have it. You're not going to be uncomfortable to get the thing. But like for me to get the thing, the expectation is that I've got to like suffer, <laughs> you know, like to have unity, I have to suffer. And okay. I just think we have to like, we have to acknowledge that there's two, there's two paths there. And a lot of people are going to pick the one that's going to produce the most income. Hello. Yes. Yes, but how much is an like? How much do you need? Yeah, how much know, do you need? Because, because the the endorsements were rolling in, you were gonna be all right. You got how many Kentucky Fried yeah. Chicken Popeyes commercials? Right. You were gonna be all right. Your whole right. family got a check off of the one commercial. I saw everybody was in it. Like your right. son got a million dollar deal. Y'all gonna be all right? At what point is enough enough? And I feel like we have been for. Uh, thrown this lie about a billionaire stat. Like everyone wants to be a billionaire. Yes. Ah, thousand. Wendy said this back in the day. Being a thousandaire is not a bad life. You know, it's funny. I, I uh, over the last couple of years, have spent a lot of time going back to St. Louis and being in Alabama with my people of origin and original communities. And if you hang out with Black folks of a certain age, you hear them say, uh, if they're referencing someone's financial status or they think someone has done well, they, oh, yeah, he's a millionaire. Oh, yeah, that person's a million. She's a millionaire. Mm -hmm. And then it just made me think, like, when the hell did we start talking about billionaires? That is that is out of reach. Uh, do you know how much a million dollars is? And you wow. know how few people in our lifetimes and in our actual scope of existence have achieved a million dollars? And when you hear older Black folks talk about somebody who's a millionaire, they talk about them with such pride and respect and admiration, not to mention multi-millionaire, right? If you happen to actually come up on two. Uh, and, and, and it's just... How how deluded have we become, right? How how out of touch and just simply disconnected from reality have we become? But is it disconnected, or or do we now have some of the perspective of the majority? We have the perspective of the majority, but all of us are disconnected. When you're talking about trying to attain us, and, and we're talking about laying plans and groundwork, trying to attain a status that 100 humans in 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 the history of the globe have attained. That's insanity. And yeah. what it does is makes us ungrateful along the way, because how many of us can put our hands on five hundred thousand dollars? How many of us got that today if you couldn't make another dime? Right. Mm -hmm. And then you think you're inadequate because you're not a billionaire. When you have made one, two, three million dollars, you have particularly as a black person, you have exceeded extraordinarily well in this country. But you want to skip over all of that and glorify billionaires who have absolutely and objectively probably oppressed a whole lot of people oh absolutely that kind of wealth when you're talking about billion dollars you're talking about the wealth of nations right yeah